Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Presbyterian Church. My name is Anton Ahrens, and Reverend Meredith and I welcome you to worship this morning. The annual congregational meeting will take place on Sunday, January 31st at 11.30 a.m. via Zoom. We will hear reports from session committees, receive the 2021 budget, and take action regarding changes in the terms of call for Pastor Meredith. If you are a new Zoom doer, you pl can please contact Reverend Meredith and she will be happy to help set you up. The link to join the Zoom meeting will be in the January 10th and January 17th Trinity Candle and the January issue of Talking Trinity. Hope you all will join us. You can even wear your slippers to the meeting. We gather around the words of Christ, come and follow me. We gather around the voice of the Spirit, come and follow me. Let us worship God together and follow Christ into the world. Let us pray. Teach us a new rock of our salvation, how your kingdom has come near. As you called Simon and Andrew long ago, call us to be your disciples this day, that we might find refuge and strength as we face the destructive forces in our lives. Grant us the strength to wait for you in silence, that we might meet you in the subterranean chambers of our souls. For in you we rest secure, in you we abide in holy love. Amen. Nothing can be hidden from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth, whose wisdom is endless, whose mercy is great. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. Please join me in the prayer of confession, followed by a time of private confession. O oh, holy God, you called the disciples to drop their nets and follow you. Yet we are hesitant to drop the tools and comforts of our lives. We distract ourselves from your call with busyness, stress, and worry. We tangle ourselves in webs of racism, sexism, and hatred that, disgusts, that disguises itself as fear. Forgive us, O Lord, and by your forgiveness, open our ears to hear your voice saying to us, follow me. Please continue your confession in silence. Amen. In Christ, all the dividing walls of hostility have come down so that we might live in justice, friendship, and peace. Beloved ones, hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and restored and set on the right path. Thanks be to God. Saving God, source of our calling, your word is full of power and glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may receive your grace and live as your beloved children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians. Listen to the word of God. This is what I'm saying, brothers and sisters. The time has drawn short. From now on, those who have wives should be like people who don't have them. 
Those who are sad should be like the people who aren't crying. Those who are happy should be like people who aren't happy. Those who buy something should be like people who don't have possessions. Those who use the world should be like those who aren't preoccupied with it because this world in its present form is passing away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson this morning comes to us from the first chapter of Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, announcing God's good news, saying, now is the time. Here is God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. As Jesus passed alongside the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fishing nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing their fishing nets. At that very moment, Jesus called them. They followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. With so many indoor places either closed for the pandemic or offering limited services, it's unsurprising that outdoor activities are more popular than ever. In fact, many states have, in, have seen increased visitors to parks, and for the first time in, oh, many years, more people are purchasing fishing licenses. It seems that one unexpected outcome of the pandemic is that people are grabbing rod and reel and enjoying time in nature. Human beings have been fishing for over 42,000 years. Now today, commercial fishermen are responsible for much of the seafood that lands on our tables, but plenty of us still fish for recreation or for the opportunity to snag the catch of a lifetime. For Simon, Andrew, James, and John, though, fishing could hardly have been considered recreational. Fishing was their livelihood, and it was hard, nasty, hot, grueling work. The pay was pitiful, and fishermen were not exactly held in high esteem by society, even though most everyone enjoyed the culinary rewards of the fishermen's catch. These hardworking men, burnt by the sun and weathered by the wind, fished out of necessity in order to provide income and sustenance for their families. And then this guy, Jesus, shows up and says, follow me. That's it. <laughs> Follow me. No long drawn out stump speech, no explanation of where they might follow Jesus or what kind of salary, pension, and benefits may be offered. And immediately they leave their nets and proceed to follow Jesus. Now granted, if I were working endless hours on a rickety boat in the middle of a lake for terrible pay, I might just drop everything and follow this stranger too. But this was their job, and more so, this was their identity. It's, this isn't just some interruption of a, of a weekend at your buddy's lake house. This is a major paradigm shift with economic and social implications. It would be like me, it, it would be like me, the Reverend Meredith Kent Papan, packing up and moving to New York City so I could perform with the Rockettes, right? It doesn't make any sense. And leaving all behind to follow a stranger didn't make any more sense back then than it would in today's world. 
What is it about Jesus that is so overwhelming that that simple command, follow me, is heeded with immediate action? Many prominent theologians posit that the call of these fishermen to leave their nets, they, they think that maybe it's a metaphor for how the grace of God calls us to follow Jesus. It is grace which calls out to the fishermen and grace that compels them to follow the Messiah. No one has reflected more on this relationship between grace and discipleship than the German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer writes that the call to follow implies that there is only one way on believing in Jesus, and that is by leaving all and going with the incarnate Son of God. Belief in Jesus and following Jesus are two separate yet related actions. If you're a disciple of Jesus, you believe in him and you follow him. You cannot believe in Christ without the action of following Christ, and you cannot follow Christ without belief. Faith without action, to borrow from Bonhoeffer's terminology, faith without action is cheap grace. Cheap grace is living and acknowledging the grace of God without acknowledging that the grace of God calls us to live differently. As Bonhoeffer explains, cheap grace is forgiveness without repentance. Now, I'm not saying this is works righteousness, so we don't do things to earn God's grace, right? We don't, we don't do things to curry God's favor. God's grace is freely and indiscriminately bestowed on us. But our actions cheapen this grace when we do not live as the forgiven, loved children of God. Belief in Jesus and following Jesus are two essential keys to discipleship. But what comes first? Should we believe or should we follow? Reflect on your own spiritual journey. Did you first believe in God before you followed God? Or did you follow God first and then believed? Some people are raised in the church and are quite grown up believing in Jesus. But it's not until they're older when they truly understand what it means to follow him. And likewise, some may heed that call to follow and then find themselves believing in Jesus, the one who issued the call. And it makes no difference in your journey of discipleship whether you begin first by believing or first by following. Your spiritual journey is unique to who you are, and it is the work of the Holy Spirit on how we begin our journey of faith. As I mentioned in the sermon last week, I don't live my faith for you. You don't live your faith for me. I can't, I can't do it for you. We all do it on our own, yet in community. And you may believe and you may follow, but how we get to discipleship in Christ is up to each of us. As Bonhoeffer points out, the road to faith passes through obedience to Jesus Christ. Just like the joy of fishing is more of an experience, not the outcome, fishing for people is a continuous exercise in discipleship. As fishers of people, we're not always going to snag the catch of the day, and there's going to be times when our work seems futile, when fishing feels pointless, we might even become agitated with Jesus at times, especially when our work feels like a waste of our time. And just as people have been dis rediscovering fishing during this pandemic, we too, the church, have rediscovered new ways to fish. And I believe that is a blessing of the last you know, 10 or 11 months that we have learned to catch people, that we have learned to fish for people using other means, using technology, Zoom, online worship, even phone calls, notes, text messages, all these things to fish in new and different ways. And you know what? There are some days when your nets may teem with life. They may be filled to the point of breaking. And it's tempting during times of great harvest to say, well, that's something we did. Look at this impressive catch. Look at how smart we are in our ingenuity, our own piety, our polity at work. 
But Jesus is not impressed, though, with how many fish we may or may not reel in. Discipleship is not about filling a quota or performing all the duties on a checklist. Discipleship is always a process. Discipleship is a process. Discipleship is a process about experience and not always the result. All Jesus would have us do is to follow him and believe. After experience what real obedience to Jesus is, our faithful response is to joyfully cast our nets in order that we may share this good news. We have our new master in Jesus, and he's a different one. He's a different master who walks among us, who will sacrifice his own life in an order that we might inherit an eternal life. And imagine if everyone, everyone in our neighbor, everyone in Topeka, everyone around this herd and experienced this good news of Jesus as we have. We're going to need a bigger boat. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved ones, let us draw near to God as we pray for our own needs and the needs of the world. Let us pray. God of new visions, we pray for people highly placed in power that they may focus their eyes on you. And we pray for the lowly victims of power that they may also focus their eyes on you. We pray for those who bless with their lips, but curse with their mouths, including ourselves. We pray for those who are ill and facing the end of life. Give to them the gift of prayer, that they may pour out their hearts to you. We pray for the church and its leaders, that we may hear and respond to your call to be fishers of people. We pray for those needs, those joys, and those sorrows that we hold in our heart. Rock of our salvation, through Christ and your Holy Spirit, bring us into the new world that you are shaping, even as this world is passing away. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has told us what is good and what does the Lord require? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Let us take a moment to reflect on what we will give to God today. If you feel called to give financially, you may do so by going to the Trinity website and giving through our safe and secure online portal.
God of abundance, you teach us the dangers of setting our hearts on earthly riches. May these offerings be symbols of our faith in your bounty and our commitment to follow your call in our lives, wherever you may lead. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we boldly pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world, have courage, hold on to what is good, return to no one evil for evil, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, and rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you now and forevermore. Amen.